It's a shade afternoon. The wind has been blowing and blowing and raining east northeast 15 to 25 and higher gust up to 40. Unbelievable. Rough as bricks, rough as bricks. Higher gust, maybe the 50. I got one more knife drop off and I'll be headed home. It's uh, 250 right now. Going 60. On uh, 264 headed to the land of Nada. If I kept going straight, I'd run right into the ocean. The nasty day. I got when I get home I'm gonna do a add-on to this video about some a gear related item. That you have seen before, but it's I got some modifications to it. I get back to you. Well, we're knocking along here in this 25 mile an hour school zone. Let's uh, get to the subject of boats. I sort of forgiven. I mean, I, I almost uh, decided to go with the trailer of a boat. I think it'd be too much hassle trying to slide it in and out of the truck. I've been looking at two uh, aluminum boats. Crestliner and Lowe's makes a nice 12 foot aluminum boat. But being a saltwater guy, I don't know uh, much about aluminum and saltwater except they don't like each other. Now when I was doing a lot of fishing in the 70s and 80s, there were several of my buddies had aluminum boats and uh, they did okay. And I imagine things have improved since then on aluminum and salt water in boats, but I don't know that. So I'm looking for comments. I'm really favoring a little boat made in Florida called a stump knocker. I got a guy in Stumpy Point, North Carolina, who sells them. I'm looking at the, uh, they call it a 144 tiller. It's a 14-foot stump knocker. Probably put a Yamaha on it. Nine or 15. I've been looking at this Tihatsu with EFI. I didn't even know they made outboard motors with EFI. But I'm looking for comments now. So you, everybody's in this boat deal. Fill me in with some information. What else am I looking at? A solo skiff. I really like the I don't know if I got the name of the damn thing. Anna, Anna something. And the other one's a Vaganza, but they are pricey. They're, made, they're flat boats made in Florida for bone fishing and things like that. But they're not in my price range. I'm just looking at them. Stump knockers in my range. And I think the uh, two aluminum boats would be as well. I looked at Sundance. I looked at the one I really like was a Sundance. Make it after it's made by it was made by some guy named Ulmer, but they stopped making them, sold the moles, or trying to sell the moles. This is a really cool boat, but that's a dream that will never happen. Anyway, if I think of any other boats as I head home, I'll uh, add them to the back here. But give me some comments, you fishing guys. Small skiff is what I'm looking for. Well, when I got home, Chris had uh, six more knives waiting for me. A nice Victor Knox, a nice Japanese butcher knife, and four from China. Even a sharper image. Mmm, that's a nice ticket. Okay, I just sharpened them so they're ready to go. The guy's going to pick them up tomorrow. 
Tomorrow I got a knife gig at the Taste Unlimited store across the street from where I live from uh, 11 to 3 tomorrow. And then I have the farmer's market on Saturday from 9 to noon and I leave there and I come back to the same place as tomorrow from 1 to 5. And then Sunday, we got that big farmer's market that we worked on Wednesday afternoon, if you remember it, in the summertime at the big Episcopal of church called the Good Shepherd. It's from 2 to 5 Sunday. So I'll be knifed up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then the land of Nala. With this wind, I guarantee you something's moving. The guru, I'll put a picture of the guru's ring. The guru went this morning in all this wind and rain and cold. He bought some brand new 5 millimeter, no, 7 millimeter boots. He said he, said he came in yesterday he had to try them this morning. He said, man, my feet were nice and warm. He said, my body, my hands and my body are like they froze to death out there, he said. The guru is a piece of work. I'll get back to you in a minute. Encounter of the first kind. Close encounter, I should say. They tolerate each other to a degree. Besides the knives I got when I got home, I didn't know about it. I got a package when I got home from the Gritch. Great big box. Well, not great big, but box. And inside, come out of there, you piece of ticket, you. is a little teeny box. Made in China. Low Lindsay earbuds for the Equinox. We'll go and we'll test it here in a few minutes and see how they turn out. Got them on eBay from some recommendations. Well, while we're chatting, we might as well continue on here. Let's go over here. Related to that. It's related to that. It's related to this. For many, many years, people have always asked me, what are those d black spots on your E-Track? I mean, uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, CTX. They're raised buttons. I put them on there after I first got it because we were doing a lot of night hunting. And I didn't like turning the screen on to find out what I needed to see. This, the light only lit up the screen anyway. It didn't light up the buttons. So I had to feel. So I put those on there for the buttons that I needed to feel. And it's been on amazingly well ever since. Now let's see where it is here. Here it is. Stand by. 3M makes some amazing products. And one of their most amazing products is 5200 Marine Adhesive Sealer. It comes in black, it comes in white. I'm not sure if it comes in clear or not, but I've used both, black and white. And that's what the dots are on top of my CTX, little dabs of 5200 Now... I got some nice dress shoes that I wear for funerals. And the heels kept coming loose on them. So I loaded them up with 5200. They have never come loose ever again. You remember my nice Henderson 7mm boots. It had all the... Uh, Loose this and loose that. After giving them close examination, they didn't have any holes in them. They just were coming loose at the toe on this one. And this one was coming a loose on the heel. No, I got them backwards. This is the toe one. You can see the Marine uh, 5200 coming out from there. I can assure you one thing. The boot might fail, 
someplace else, but it ain't going to fail where the 5200 was. This is the one on the heel. You can't see it, but it's on there. And I put some on the front just in case. So as far as I know, uh, and they, it's been on there for at least uh, 10 days. So I know it's ready to go or use if I go back to the land of Nod or someplace or wherever. And I think I mentioned that the guru found a gold ring this morning or a gold looking ring. Uh, might be stainless steel. They look like gold. It's a nice looking ring and it's got GG inside. Well, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you a picture of it in a little while. Anyway, he bought some new boots. And I don't know from who or what brand they were, but I'm trying to find that out. Seven millimeter of some sort. And he wanted to test them out today. And, of course, you've seen the conditions if you've seen the first part of the video. And it was so damn rough and so windy. But the guru just had to take them boots out and try them. So I asked him, I said, well, how'd your boots do? Oh, man, my boots, they were the nicest boots I ever had. Some of seven millimeter of my feet were nice and warm. He said, but my whole body and my hands like the froze off. I said, well, there you go, rocket scientist. You know how it goes. All right, let's take these, uh, where the hell are they? These Chinese earbuds that I got a good review from. Let me find them. Oh, they're in the box. Stand by a minute. Okay, here they are. Check this in the water. You get extra ear doodads, a charging cable. And I'll give them a charge for about 15 minutes and then I'll come back to this video and we'll try them out. You got different size things for your ears. You already know all that. Stand by a minute. Another failure. I have no luck. At least I can return them. I'll keep trying. 